We are joined now by Jim Nagy, the executive director of the Reese's Senior Bowl. And we talk to Jim every two weeks. And it seems like every time we talk to you, Jim, there is a massive matchup looming where a bunch of guys that you're looking at for your game are about to play each other. And you can kind of get a, a sense of where everybody is. This Ohio State-Penn State game looks like a lot of fun. And I imagine for, for your scouts, there's a lot to look at. Yeah, it's a big boy matchup, Andy, for sure. Uh, we've seen both these both these teams play uh, a couple times already this year, but but not in a type of matchup game that this will be. I mean, this is one of those games. Literally, as a scout, like you don't really know where to train your eyes because there's there's one on one matchups all over the field. So this will be a fun one. What what of of all these one on ones? What are you most excited to watch? Oh man, uh, <laughs> there's some good ones. Obviously, the the offensive tackles for for Penn State. Olu Fashanu is is a great one, and everyone talks about Olu. But Caden Wallace is a really good player as well. Uh, you know, in the trenches there against Ty Hamilton, was watching a lot of that Ohio State defense um, last night. So Ty Hamilton's a really good player. We had his brother here in the Senior Bowl a couple of years ago. Uh, Devon Hamilton, great player for Jacksonville oh, yeah. Jaguars now. Um, but then on the second level, like Steel Chambers, Tommy Eichenberg, um, there are two safeties who are going to be up there near the box. Josh Proctor is having a, you know, a really cool bounce back um, season after a little bit of a down year last year. Uh, Lathan Ransom has taken a nice step forward this year as a player. So um, some of the trench work, I think, will uh, be focused in on uh, on the guys inside. The the Penn State defense seems to have have really carried them this far. Who who on that group do, do you are you looking at? Knows that they've got some younger guys, you know, Chop Robinson, Abdul Carter, <laughs> Kalen King, who are, are not necessarily seniors yet. But who are the older guys that that you've been impressed by? Yeah, I've had a lot of scouts call and be like, "Is Chop Robinson eligible to play in your game?" And I'm like, "He no, seems like, old." No. I yeah. like, they're like, "God, he's a good player." So I I haven't watched much of him, but I know he's good just based on what what the scout feedback is. But um, the guy opposite him, you know, Adisa Isaac had a really yeah. had a, had a, another. Another strong game. He's played pretty well all season, but I think, you know, statistically broke, broke through with had two or three sacks this past week. Uh, I'm looking forward to getting to that tape. I'm actually going to watch that later this afternoon. But like Curtis Jacob, uh, Curtis Jacobs lead him in, in, in tackles. You know, Johnny Dixon at corner is a guy that we feel like had a, had a better year this year than last year. He's taken a nice jump. So, uh, but I'd say right now, like Adisa Isaac is a guy that in, a, in what like right now looks like it's going to be a thinner edge class. Mm -hmm. Then maybe we've had the last couple of years. Um, he's a guy that certainly helped himself so far. So I, I don't know what this means in the scouting world. We learned this about Adisa at Big Ten Media Day. Does not eat shrimp. Not Ooh. a shrimp guy. Jeez, and that's not uh, that's not good for coming down here on the Gulf Coast. I thought we, you know, usually usually we win guys over with uh, with our with our Gulf seafood once we get them down here. So we will. Well, uh... it might have been that it was at St. Elmo <laughs> and covered in the in the horseradish sauce. So we. we... I think you got a shot. You 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 take him for some good barbecued shrimp head on kind of thing. We we may you may be able to to convert him, but yeah, that's uh that's such a fun game. And when when you guys are watching, how much does that level of competition change the way you you watch or the you know how you evaluate the performance? Well, the the matchups are one part of it. Just seeing good against good. There's no doubt when you want to you want to see NFL prospects against NFL prospects. But but there's something to be said for the environment as well. Uh, most big stage games. I mean, guys guys shrink and guys rise to the occasion. It happens. I mean, there's something to it. And it, it's not in every case. Um, but if you watch enough of those games over a guy's career and he's consistently playing up in big stage games like that, it, it's it's something you got to bring up as a scout. Um, it's something that that helps you build conviction on a player because what's the ultimate goal once you get them on your NFL team? It's to get to the playoffs and have guys make plays in the playoffs. We've seen a lot of guys that once we get to playoff time, I think of like Frank Clark for the Kansas City Chiefs. Um, we drafted Frank when I was in Seattle, and now to see him go on to Kansas City and really be a big game player for them and going way back in, into my, my time in the NFL, like Rodney Harrison was a guy for us in New England that – I think there was a stretch there. Rodney had seven turnover, forced turnovers in like six playoff games wow. in, in one of those good stretches we had um, in New England. So, so yeah, guys, guys are going to be looking for stuff like that. We'll be right back with more from Jim Nagy from the Senior Bowl. But first, I want to tell you about Roback. Yeah, I'm wearing my Roback performance hoodie. It is the most 
comfortable garment I own. I have five different versions of it. This is the navy blue one. I got the black one. I got the green one that matches my eyes. They're all amazing. Roback makes sure you are comfortable and can move. All of their stuff is soft and it just fits you in all the right places. It's got just enough stretch that you don't feel like it's tight, but it's also not just billowing all over the place. Performance hoodies, performance polos, the Q-zips, the joggers, the shorts, they got it all. And as the weather cools down, those performance polos will become your absolute go-to. So go to roback.com, R-H-O-B-A-C-K.com. Use the promo code STAPLES for 20% off your first order. I'm telling you right now, you're going to get one of these performance hoodies. You're going to put it on. You're never going to want to take it off. But you have to. You have to wash it every once in a while. Oh, no, by the way, Roback stuff holds up great in the wash. Roback.com, promo code STAPLES, 20% off your first order. Go get yourself a performance hoodie. You will not regret it for a second. Roback.com, promo code STAPLES. So let's talk about some of these other guys you've been watching over the past few weeks. One guy who's been in the news all year is Tez Walker. We haven't gotten to see him play until he played against Syracuse a couple of weeks ago. And then this past weekend against Miami was the first time he's gotten to play after a full week of practice with the ones. And of course he catches three touchdown passes. Uh, I imagine you, you'd seen Kent state tape on him, but, but what did you think of his first, uh, first full outing for North Carolina? Well, just amazing that he can come back. Um, you would think you would be rusty. Um, that certainly wasn't the case. Uh, yeah, we like the Kent state tape. I mean, there was, Again, there were some cool playoff games for them last year when they played at Georgia, and he, and he caught a, a quick hitch and took it to the house against a fast Georgia defense. So we knew he was explosive. He can get down the field and make plays. And then when you have a deep ball thrower um, like like Drake May that can really play to your strengths as a player, I mean, that's, that's a great marriage right there. So it didn't surprise us uh, that Tez can make an impact like that. We thought he would going into the season. But coming off that long rest and that break and just having that chemistry um, was really cool to see. Yeah, three touchdowns in the, in the first game back. was That was pretty huge. So let, let's keep it in the ACC. Another guy that, that you guys seem pretty high on is, uh, is MJ Devonshire, the DB from Pittsburgh. He had a huge play in that win against Louisville this weekend. What, what have you liked about him? Yeah, MJ is a guy that, uh, you know, we've just been looking for some more consistency with. And, and again, the other night, like we, he was one of our players of the week this week, but it wasn't perfect. It wasn't a perfect game. He he gave up a touchdown early. He had a PI in another red zone series early. Um, but what in, in, in a great matchup against, against Jamari Thrash from Louisville, mm -hmm. who's had an awesome year since transferring over from, from Georgia State, one of the best receiver, your senior receivers in this year's draft class. Um, but to see MJ battle back and battle through that adversity, he had five PBUs the other night. I mean, that's, wow. I mean, that's a lot. I mean, that's, that's a season for some guys to get their hands on five balls and, and they were testing him down the field and, and thrash can really run. Um, and so for him to make plays down the field and show up in coverage and, and really show the NFL that short memory that you're going to need to have to play at that level. Um, it was a cool game. It was a cool game because it wasn't perfect. Um, it was a bad weather game. Footing wasn't great. Um, and just the, just the mental resiliency to come back against another good NFL, future NFL player um, in battle, um, that's what you want to see. So one of the guys I forgot to ask you about in the Ohio State-Penn State matchup is, is Cade Stover. Who's, uh, you've seen you guys put out some stuff on him. He's fascinating to me because he's a tight end uh, in an offense that features some great receivers where the, the targets for the tight end probably are going to be a little bit down because you can throw to Marvin Harrison Jr. You can throw to Emeka Buka. But it does seem like Cade, more than any of the, the, the recent Ohio State tight ends, is a pretty big contributor in the pass game. That's right. And he's, and he's on pace right now to break uh, Ricky Dudley's record back from the 90s. I mean, we're going way, way back now. So, uh, And we've had some Ohio State tight ends in the game. I think Jeremy Ruckert was the last one. Uh, but, you know, with Cade, to me, the difference this year with Cade he looks a little quicker. Um, again, without talking to the strength staff up there, I, I don't know what goes into that, but some guys just come back for, for their last year and, and they look a little different as a player. And sometimes that's technique. Sometimes they look like better athletes. Um, and Cade's always been a good athlete. He was a big time high school running back. He was Mr. Football in the state of Ohio. 
Um, so he's always been a good athlete, but there just looks a little twitchier. And then uh, I think, you know, big picture with him as a prospect, what NFL teams are really going to like is the guy played linebacker. I mean, he's got like four starts at linebacker and a couple starts at defensive end over his time at Ohio State. And he's played over 500 special team snaps. So, uh, you know, those are those are going to be big time things when you get into April and you start stacking that tight end group um, and where it shakes down. One, he can put his hand in the dirt. He's a tough kid. He's a farm kid. Um, yep. He's like you said, he's on pace to break the, the Ohio State receiving record for tight ends. And he's played in the kicking game and he's played on defense. So there's a lot to like with Cade. Yeah, he he fills the farm kid quota that that Cody Mock filled last year for you guys. Yeah, so, yeah, he, he yeah, checks you gotta, that box. Checks you got to have the guy who grew up on the farm. So uh, another guy that that looked pretty good this past week, uh, Missouri Edge Darius Robinson. Yeah, and, and Andy, I know you saw him at SEC Media Days when we yeah. were up there, and uh, they don't make him look any prettier. He's he's 6'5", 290, 200, 295 pounds. Um, Big broad shoulders, long arms, big hands. I mean, he he is exactly how you would draw him up. Um, and they're playing him a little differently. And he and I talked about that at, at Media Days, is that they're playing him out on the edge more. He's like a jumbo edge player right now. He's matched up against tight ends, and he's absolutely abusing them. Um, and this week was, it was, was probably his best game. Um, he's always played hard, but he's really playing with leverage right now. I mean, he's getting after the quarterback, and that's what teams are going to want to see. So he's really versatile. He's athletic enough to move out there. We've seen that. He's big and tough enough to move inside. He can play with leverage. He can play with pad level. So just a really cool player. Um, and I really like where his head was at. When we were in Nashville, um, he asked me, he said, he said, you know, Jim, can I ask you a question? I said, yeah, Darius, well, what is it? And he's like, why didn't I get an invite to the senior bowl last year? Um, and, and, again, and I told him, I said, Darius, I just revisited all your tape before I came up here. And man, I, I don't have a great reason for you, man. You're, you're right there at the cut line and you're definitely good enough to get in. Um, and it was just the way he asked the question, man. It was, yeah. it was, he's focused, he's locked in. So it's cool to see him playing the way he's playing this year as a senior. Are you seeing more of that, that the heavier guys out on the edge, uh, you know, like we saw Landon Jackson dominate this weekend for Arkansas. Now he's six, seven, so he, he can carry a little more weight, but Kentucky's used Deion Walker out there. And I, he's not he's a guy who's a little young for your game, but he's a, He's a 330 pound guy that they'll play on the edge sometimes. Is it is that to create a mismatch? I it certainly. And I just think we're seeing bigger, more athletic people, man. I just think yeah. it's, you know, over the last 10 years, I mean, these guys just keep getting bigger and, and more athletic. And and it does. It creates a mismatch. If you if you want a guy that you can find bigger body, thicker bodied guys can sit it sit in there and, and muck it up inside. What you can't find is is guys with length. I mean that have quickness that can play out there. And that's the thing that Darius showed the other day is that um, could you find it maybe a little faster guy out there that can close from the backside, but, but just with his range, just with his reach and the range he has, the, the length of his frame, I mean, it's hard to get outside of him. I mean, if you're trying yeah. to, if you're trying to set an edge and you got a guy that can manhandle tight ends um, that is a cool matchup for sure. Yeah, I can't imagine trying to reach block somebody with that kind of wingspan. It's just, it's not how he's just reaching around you. So uh, one guy that that everybody was talking about over the weekend, it was the, the the focus, you know, the game everybody was focusing on, Michael Penix Jr. And he's one that I, I've wondered about from you guys' standpoint, because you look at things a little bit differently than, than say, the, the average college football fan looks at it. We look at Michael Penix and he's just putting up these gaudy numbers and it's crazy you're looking at him from a, a scout standpoint where he's got the medicals from three season ending injuries. How is, is he, you know, kind of faring right now? And is he increasing his draft stock? He absolutely is. And last week was a really big game for him. Um, you know, going into that game, I, I read some stat that going into last Saturday, Bo Nix was the least pressured quarterback. Um, in college football. And I think Michael Penix Jr. was like the fifth least pressured quarterback. So again, a lot, you turn on the tape up, up to last Saturday, it was a lot of pitch and catch stuff. Um, and you, so what you saw in that game was both defenses kind of heated those guys up. Both those defenses, Oregon and Washington have, have future NFL dudes on their team. Um, and so Michael, I mean, he kept doing what he's been doing just against better people um, and doing it with people in his face and, um, and in the tighter windows with good coverage from guys like Kyrie Jackson on the Oregon side. So 
Um, yeah, like you brought up the medical and, and, and some of that other stuff and the age, I think, is going to come into play for NFL teams when they're stacking this thing. Um, but, man, he's doing all he can do right now in that offense. And, yeah, you can make an argument he's, he's got great playmakers and a lot was made on ESPN over the weekend of what, where those three receivers rank, maybe the best in college football. Uh, but Michael Penix Jr., to put the ball where he does down the field and that quick strike ability, man, is, is – uh, it's a really cool thing to have. And when, when, when Oregon went for it on fourth late in the game and they let Michael Penix get back out there in a minute and a half and then boom, boom, two plays later in the, in the end zone. I mean, that to me, that was the Washington offense and that was Michael Penix Jr. in a nutshell. I mean, it's that quick strike explosive ability. And if you're an NFL team, who wouldn't want that? You know, like to me, yeah. I always think, well, what, what, where would L. Davis take this guy if L. Davis, <laughs> uh, God rest his soul, were still Maybe with a little, us? A little this, higher than anybody else. Yeah. yeah, this guy, this guy would be the, the, you know, he'd be the Raiders' first round pick for sure. We gotta, we gotta talk about one of your guys you had last year though, Tyson Bajan, Shepherd College, D two. You were, you guys were on him in the preseason last year. He came, played your game. He is going to start for the Bears this week because Justin Fields has a dislocated thumb in honor of Tyson Bagent and yet another Senior Bowl success story. Can you give us a couple small school gems that we need to be paying attention to right now this college football season? Well, I will say this. The uh, NIL in uh, Portal is hurting the small school level in terms of uh, Senior Bowl. We, 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 we don't like that. A lot of these guys are transferring up for their last year. But I'll throw a couple names at you. Jalix Hunt um, mm. is a former Cornell player who's now at Houston Christian. Um, big, long edge guy. Played safety um, in the Ivy League. And now he's kind of a big outside linebacker hybrid type player. Uh, we went and saw him play a few weeks ago at Southeastern Louisiana. Really intriguing dude. Um, just from a length and traits perspective. He's the type of guy that everyone's kind of targeting right now in the fifth, sixth round. So he's Wait, an he, he was a safety he was a safety and he's he just six, four two fifty. I know. And he just keeps growing. So yeah, he's uh he's a cool one. Um, I'll bring, and then like Dylan Lobb, go to the other side of the ball. Dylan Lobb, the running back at New Hampshire, um, who we kind of profiled earlier in the year, set an NCAA all divisions record for running backs. I think he had 12 or 13 catches for like 297 against central Michigan early in the year. And he's, and he's really the type of back that the NFL is looking for right now, because you can line him up out in the slot. I mean, he's not just a leak him out of the backfield, you know, hit him in the screen game. He can legitimately run detached routes and get open and, and track and catch the ball down the football field. So um, those are a couple. I mean, we, we went through the small school list yesterday. Um, there's probably 10 to 12 guys that'll be in the mix. And again, we want to bring the guys the NFL will want to see. So we'll have those conversations with the teams when we get to that stage of the process here in a few weeks. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's drying up a little bit because of portal. Right. Uh, you you would have a, you would have had a Johnny Cornelius in a Rhode Island helmet this that's year, right. but now everybody sees him playing for Oregon. That's right. That's a, that's a perfect example of a guy that, that would have been a, a guy for us at a small school and, and transferred up. So yeah, it's uh, it's drying up a little bit, but there's still, if, if you watch these guys enough, there's still a lot of good small school players out there. That's I love I love it. I'm always like, how do they find this guy? And and you do it every year. So, Jim, thank you so much. Yeah, Andy, good to see you, man. These uh, these two weeks always go by fast. Uh, enjoy the I week. Know, enjoy I've... enjoy that Penn State Ohio State. That's going to be a great one. Cannot wait. <laughs> thank you so much for watching. Just a reminder: subscribe to this channel right here so you never miss an episode of Andy Staples on Three. And oh, by the way, watch all the other great videos on the On3Sports YouTube channel.